Spezza Beat, Air Guns and Stuff Yorkshire, and today I'm doing a review of the Scope Mountable Rangefinder. This is the Mark V, and it has a few little extras included with it that some of the others don't, and it does solve quite a few problems. I chose today to do the review because the weather said it was going to be overcast, and clear blue skies, but we'll think of something. Uh, let's have a quick look at the product, and go over a couple of things that it does, and then we'll have a look at some application. Okay, so there is the rangefinder itself. At the front you've got a little mode button and then a wire comes out here which has got the rat tail on it which I put onto the left hand side because I'm a lefty and I've got it there just so I can click it with my index finger, take it from the trigger to the rangefinder. Comes with the velcro included. Uh, I haven't tried pulling the velcro off because it'll probably take my dip with it. But that's the controls. Okay, so when you turn the rangefinder on, using the rat tail, press it for about half a second, and it pops on. There at the minute it is flickering, but I can assure you it's a solid picture to look at, it's just the, uh, the frame rate of the camera that's making it look like it's freaking out. A couple of modes on here, uh, we've just got range finding, and then it comes up and says fog, and then it's got HD. I'm sure that's height distance. It has actually got a yaw sensor in it, so it can work out your distance to your height. And then it's got HD fog, so I'm assuming that it does the same in foggy weather. Then it's got speed, so this can be used as a, a radar gun like the police use. And then you can change it from yards to meters. I just keep it in yards because I work everything out in yards. Okay, the last little thing that the Mark V does that the others don't is if you hold the end button down for about five seconds I believe two three four five and this is why I was hoping for an overcast day you do get a laser pointer there and you can see this through the scope in overcast weather and you can actually use it to zero the rangefinder to your scope and no matter where downrange this laser's pointing, it always matches up with the rangefinder. It does have open sights on the top. I haven't really used them all that much because I use the red dot, but they're there if you need it. Okay, this is where the Mark V comes in. It has holes on the left hand side to put this little adjustable mount on. It has them on the right hand side to swap it over to this side and it has them underneath as well don't know if you can see them there we'll just guess that you can so you can put this rangefinder on the right if you're a lefty on the top if you're not going to have a screen of any sort and on the left if you're a righty that makes this perfect for almost anyone in any shooting situation I usually have a screen here when I'm shooting at night, so having the rangefinder in front of the screen is no good because you can't see the screen because of the screen. The adjusters on this can be done via this little turning knob here, and then this screw. One's for height, one's for windage. Uh, they work really well. The scope ring was included in the package. It had a spacer in it for a one inch tube. I took that out because I'm using a 30mm tube. It's got a Picatinny rail on the side, and then this mount just mounts onto it. I leave this on my scope all the time. Okay, the rangefinder takes a single CR2 battery. And this was included in the package. It's a very small battery. And it literally pops in there. And then you screw the cap on. And then it's watertight. I would advise using a coin to tighten it up, but don't go mad, uh, just to stop any water from getting in there. I've been using this rangefinder a lot, and if you look at the battery up there as it flickers by, it's still full. And when I mean I've been using this a lot, I mean I've been using it a lot. So the battery that comes with it is gonna last a good long time, unless you leave it turned on all the time, or if you forget to turn your red dot off, which I've done a couple of times and it's still fully charged. 
Now the rangefinder works day or night, depending on whether you've got it zeroed into your scope or not. If you've got it zeroed into your scope and you put it back on the same rail as the Picatinny every single time, you can literally just look through your scope, press the button, press it again, look back at your rangefinder, you know the range. That is it. You know, it's not guessing or anything like that. If you get it zeroed in and you take it off and you put it back in the same position, you can effectively use your scope as your rangefinder. You don't need to take your head away from the gun. You just open your other eye, you look, it's there. If you're using a handheld rangefinder, you have to put your gun down, you have to range it, click, put that down, go back to it. It's, it's a faff. It's a proper ball. This can be used at night. I haven't got time to test it at night, but I will test it at night. But basically, when you look through the scope, through your night scope, you can just see a little line, and that is the rangefinder ping. It's just the infrared signal that it puts out and that it picks up. And basically, you put that over your target, say it's a rabbit, press the button twice, look at the screen, and it stores the yardage there. If it says 35, make adjustments to your scope for 35. You can guarantee it'll be bang on. Okay, I'm going to look at the application for this. I've set out a range. I know the yardage is. It's 25, 30, 40, 45, and 50, 55. Uh, I've pasted it out. I know 55 is where it is because that's where I set my furthest point before I sat down. But we're going to check them using the scope. So we'll start at 30 and then we'll just maybe check the 40 and then the 55. Okay. So you have to bear with me on this one because I'm using the scope and the camera all at the same time. So the box out there, I don't know if you can see it through here, you know, it's pointless. I haven't got my scope cam with me, but basically I turn the rangefinder on, it's on there, and then I look at the box, press it twice, and then check the reading. And the screen is messing it up, but it says 29 yards. Uh, and then if I go out to the next one, which is 40 yards, double click, it says 42 yards there. So my pacing is average at best. The one behind it, it says 46 yards. And then, if I go to the bit of wood at the back, it says 55 yards. It's a bit of a shame that that screen isn't a solid screen on the phone, but you get the idea. So, with this scope as well, it's a perfect combination, so I just click that button twice, and then I just move that to 55 and zeroed. Uh, it's a lot more effective than using the focus wheel, but it is a good way of getting your focus wheel absolutely cock on. All these things together on this gun make ranging a thing of the past. It is literally ping it, turn the window to whatever it is, and we're zeroed. If you want to see a review of this scope, just head over to my channel. I'll leave the video in the top left at the end of this video. Okay, so the application for this Essentially, you're walking through your permission. You're creeping about. I'll catch that wascally wabbit. And then with two hands, oh, unfortunately, not for me, you hold your gun and you see your quarry. You ping it with that little laser there that's just showing up. Oh my God. And then, oh my God. Then you press your button. You know it's 31 yards away. So from here, I can shoot that last box, that one. Now it seems all the shooting from before has scared those wascally wabbits away. Just make sure I don't fall over in this crap. But if one of them was to be out there, it'd be nice, but they're not. I'm gonna rest my gun on this fence because I'm really struggling to hold it. So. There we are, nice and rested. So, you're scanning your field, and then, oh my god, a shed. I've been wanting to hunt a shed for ages. Press the ping, 
look for the laser which is just inside there oh can you see it flickering away so aimed on the shed and we know from this fence it's 113 yards away it's way out of my range all right guys there you have it the scope mountable rangefinder and it works in the day and at night if you get the mark 5 and you can zero it to your crosshair uh, any other one i think is inferior that's why it's the mark 5 it works for almost every application so it's a bit steep it was 135 pounds from ebay but it is all a single unit to my scope and with that with it being attached all the time it can be used in the day can be used in the night if i'm practicing on the hft range i can judge the range i can look tick tick i was wrong or i was right if i'm out hunting it's you know it's always there it's about that big weighs about 200 grams in total with that clamp on it you never know it's there it is an essential tool if you are shooting an air gun in the uk and especially like me if you're shooting a 2.2 it just takes any guesswork out and it increases your accuracy tenfold because there is absolutely no guesstimation with range right you can get this rangefinder on ebay just type in scope mountable rangefinder look for the mark 5 version it's roughly 135 pounds i highly recommend it and uh, other than that thanks for watching see you bye